Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. I was just sitting here thinking about those on the island who don't get to roam as free as they'd like. The ones who help keep the place running. I'm always talking to Sherb and Rold about what they get up to and hearing about their lives. But what about those whose stories don't always get told? I think it's time they do. So let's start with someone who has been here since the beginning. The man behind everything we know. A man we know as Tom Nook. Tom Nook. Not sure if it's short for Thomas. Born May 30th. The year is unknown, but it's assumed that he is in his late 30s, possibly 40s. I don't wish to insult him, but it's one of the many mysteries surrounding our local Tanuki friend. Although we now know Tom as an extravagant businessman with many bells to his name, the Mr. Moneybags of the island, if you will, but this wasn't always the case. He was born in a small country town. Young Tom actually lived the early years of his life in a tree stump. He eventually sold the stump for double what he paid for it. This could have been what would later inspire him to work in real estate. There isn't much information about his parents or his upbringing. He doesn't talk about it ever. He's only mentioned his early life when talking about how his garden keeps him humble, possibly always a reminder of the stump he was raised in. However, he did mention being rather mischievous at school. He rarely turned in his schoolwork, preferring to do almost anything else with his free time. In his childhood, he developed a close friendship with Sable of the Able Sisters, though sometimes I wonder if it ran a little deeper than friendship. When they were young, before an observatory was built in their hometown, they would climb on top of the rooftops to see the stars and make constellations together. Sable's was apparently called the Star Shirt and Tom's the shape of a market he called the Farmer's Market Bargain Bin Constellation. Sable will also tell you that he has a beautiful singing voice, but don't tell Tom she said that. The two spent a lot of time together, that is, until Tom Tom decided it was time for him to move to the big city. Tom used to live by the saying, dreams before money. Because of this, those around him worried he was too pure for the world, that he wouldn't survive the craziness, that it would chew him up and spit him out. And it's quite possible they were right. His time in the city was not a happy one, or the big dreams he had expected. His first job paid him minimal, and the harsh realities of the city life soon got the best of him. Although they were no longer spending every day together, Tom still made the effort to send Sable letters as often as possible. She received her first one in the January after he left. For her birthday in November that year, he'd sent her a wooden box and inside that box were a pair of orange scissors. A fine gift for a seamstress, despite his lack of funds. After being denied a bank loan, Tom ran into financial hardships and did not react well. But it wasn't just this that would see to his economic downfall. If you have ever spoken to the man, you will know he has no trust for foxes. Although he doesn't speak of it much, he once worked with a fox. He refers to what happened as the incident. Whatever happened between Tom and that fox is lost to history, but it caused Tom so much stress and money problems that he had to return to the country. His dreams completely shattered. The fox who almost caused his ruin is rumoured to still be lurking around the islands to this day, and possibly worked in cahoots with a shifty insurance salesman, but of course nothing can be confirmed. His failure to make something of himself in the city and the incident made Tom into a different person upon his return home. No longer the pure-spirited and dream-chasing boy who had left, he opened a shop in his hometown, and due to his financial situation, he even lived in it. He worked as a sort of town manager. He and Sable's friendship seemed to have broken down. The two no longer spoke or spent time as they once did. The Tanuki became very reserved, not letting anyone in emotionally and never speaking of what happened. Tom took his new town manager position very seriously. When new people would move to the town, he would help them by building a home for them and allowing them to pay back a loan interest-free. However, he was rather pushy with his ways of getting them to pay it back in the early days. He started off kindly by offering them jobs to pay off some of it, but soon realised he lacked tasks for them to do, leaving them to find other ways to pay him back. Early on, he even threatened to send the raccoon goons after those who couldn't pay a thousand bells a week. He did calm down eventually, probably after many bothered him in the night to open his store by slamming the door with shovels. Lack of sleep will make you stop threatening people for cash if it happens often enough. He was also rather pushy about getting people to expand their homes as soon as they'd paid off their loans. Whether this was desperation because of how badly that fox had ruined him or through sheer will of making something of himself, he'd never take no for an answer. But at least he wouldn't get angry at those who couldn't pay, although people do still think he's ruthless. Tom has even mentioned these comments himself, and doesn't seem to mind people being frightened of him 
him if it means they learn the value of paying off their debts. Although they drifted, Sable still worried for Tom, often wondering if he was lonely, as he never speaks about his emotions. It's hard not to wonder the same. Through new people coming and going and his shop in town, Tom did finally manage to make something of himself, expanding his shop as the years have gone by and eventually deciding to move into real estate completely. Although this wouldn't have been possible without the help of two very special people in his life. Two young Tanuki called Timmy and Tommy somehow found their way into Mr. Nook's heart. He lovingly refers to them as his nephews, but there is no blood relation there. He simply acts as their mentor. No one is quite sure how they snuck their way into Tom's heart, but there are some theories. He would never want anyone to find out. He has too much of a reputation. But he donates over 90% of his earnings to an orphanage three towns over from his hometown. They've even named a wing after him. It's possible that Timmy and Tommy may have come from this orphanage, but alas, we will never know. Tom initially had Timmy and Tommy as assistants on the second floor when his shop expanded, but once he moved into real estate full-time with Nook's Homes, the two took over as the shopkeepers. Nook's Homes then began working closely with the Happy Home Academy, but as per usual, Tom dreamt bigger. Nook's Homes developed into Nook Incorporated and added travel agent to his list of skills. He offered a getaway package to deserted islands for people to start their lives anew. It has proved very popular. Timmy and Tommy have joined him on this venture, still running the shop for him whilst Tom focuses on the land development side of things. I like to believe his relationship with Sable is on the mend as she also agreed to be a part of his new business venture. He has become a lot kinder over the years. He no longer forces people to expand their homes at least anyway. And that's where we're at. Tom is happily organising people's getaway packages and helping them construct their dream homes. He seems happier than ever. It may not have happened how he planned, but he's become more successful than he could have ever imagined. Some still think Tom is a man in a raccoon suit. Others are suspicious of his possible illicit past. But you'll be hard pressed to find someone who isn't even the tiniest bit grateful towards Tom Nook. I hope you enjoyed this tale. Maybe I will see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram.